It's getting dark here so fast, I hope I will manage to shoot this video. Uh, today I want to tell you about some books, books for children in Germany and in Russia. Those are not just uh, some random books, but the books that till now were quite surprising for me in both countries. <laughs> There's probably no need to say that reading books when you're learning a foreign language uh, is very useful. And you should think about reading children's books. This is also what you can hear from uh, many people in the internet. And uh, I was not the exception and reading a children's book is easier in the way that the letters are bigger and it's sometimes more interesting because you will have some interesting pictures to look at. Though be careful, they also can be um, quite difficult because um, of the old-fashioned manner of writing. Uh, and this is also the case with the book that I'm going to tell you about right now, the German one. It's really difficult to read it myself without the help of my husband. Um, so be careful with choosing books. I got this book as my Christmas present last year. And uh, to be honest with you, I even haven't finished reading it, though it's almost a year. But I told you it's difficult to read because of the old-fashioned style and some unusual words that you don't learn as a beginner. Uh, but the stories that I read were very interesting and intriguing, and I want to tell you about them. I've already mentioned this book in one of my previous videos shortly, and today I want to talk about it in some details. Uh, the, this book, as you can see, is just um, the book with a lot of kinder, uh, classic, so kinder classic stories, children, children classic stories. Uh, and one of them, uh, the first one, is the series of stories about Struvelpette. Der Struvelpette. And I found them very interesting. Uh, there were around, I don't remember, nine or ten stories uh, in this series. Uh, and I will not tell you about all of them, but only about the most interesting ones. The first story uh, is called, sorry for my pronunciation, if something is wrong, I'm trying my best, Die Geschichte von den Schwarzen Buben. And this story is about the um, black boy, uh, and you can see him um, in the picture here. And I think it's really nice with the pictures made here. Uh, and uh, the the problem in the story was that there were three boys who were uh, teasing this black-skinned boy and they were not nice to him at all. And then came the uh, huge big Nicolas and you can see that the Nicolas is much bigger uh, than uh, the boys. And he decided to uh, teach them a lesson to punish them. And for that he put them in the black ink. You can see this big um, thing with the ink and he just dips them uh, into it and this was how he wanted to teach them a lesson not to be rude to this black skinned boy. Next story uh, is called Die Geschichte vom Daumenlutscher and it can be translated as the story of the thumb sucker. So it is about the boy uh, and how his mom uh, tells him don't uh, fuck at your thumb, uh, it's not really nice, uh, otherwise some bad things will happen with you. And he continues doing that and uh, uh, at the end the tailor comes with the gigantic scissors and he cuts his fingers, his thumbs off. And then you can see the blood, the blood dripping here from his um, thumbs that were cut. And when I saw it, I was very surprised because in my mind, for a children's story, uh, it's a bit cruel. Um, though I understand that children can learn a lot from stories like this. For example, not to suck at, uh, not to suck at their thumbs and to listen to their parents. Story number three is called Die Geschichte vom Suppenkasper. And um, this boy, Kasper, he uh, says that he'll not eat the soup. He refuses to eat the soup. And he's like, um, not a small boy, but like, I don't want to eat this soup. And then you see he becomes thinner and thinner and thinner. And guess what? He dies at the end because of not eating. And you can see his grave here uh, and soup standing on his grave. So again, what should a 
teach a, a child, you should eat your soup when your mom says, eat your soup. Next story is called Die Geschichte vom Fliegenden Robert. And um, this is about the boy who is named obviously Robert and Fliegende, he's a flying Robert. What happened with this boy? Uh, there was a storm outside, a really severe storm with rain and wind. Uh, and he was not supposed to go outside, but as you can understand, he went outside with his umbrella. And when he went outside with his umbrella, the air, the wind was so strong, it just lifted him and his umbrella into the air and nobody saw him again. Uh, he flew somewhere far away. Um, again, uh, a lot of things to um, look into this story for educational reasons, but again, quite harsh and severe in my mind. Um, the, the, also, the thing that I haven't mentioned, all stories are written in the poem form, uh, so they have uh, the rhythm and uh, I think for children it's really interesting to read when there is a rhythm to the um, story. I also enjoyed it to be honest and I really hope that um, I will find time and I will manage to read the rest uh, of the book, the other stories and I, um, I hope I will find them also very interesting. We'll see. I already said that sometimes here in this video, but for children's stories they sound a bit over the top, right? Though they are written with irony and this is the most important to thing to understand uh, for us grown-ups and probably also to explain to children that uh, they're written with irony and this is also can be quite good for children to understand how they should not behave. And uh, those stories made me think about the Russian book for children that I know and uh, I read as a child, though I was not uh, the biggest fan of it, but not because the book is bad. Uh, I think it's great for many children, just somehow it was not my favorite kind of books. Um, and in this book uh, that is called Harmful Advice, you will read a set of harmful advice for children uh, and they are also all written with the irony. And um, for example, uh, the first one I think in this book and the most one of the most famous ones uh, is when somebody, so it, again, it's written also in a very uh, different form in Russian, I can not tell you it in the same way. The first one in the book is the one that I remember quite good. I cannot tell you directly word by word translation, but the main idea is uh, if you are lost as a child and somebody asks your address, uh, don't tell your real address even if you know it. Um, don't uh, lose your chance, don't miss your chance to travel around the world. So say that you live under the palm near the ocean and this will be a great chance for you to travel. Advice is not the perfect one, right? There is one more advice that start with there is nothing better than pick your nose and if somebody doesn't like that you pick your nose um, then uh, tell him to get off and that is not his her business uh, because you are not looking what is going on in his nose so it's not his business just tell him that and the advice that is really well known from this book in my mind and a very classic one and the phrase from uh, this one became an idiomatic phrase in Russian language. And the advice is, if you're Russian on your bike um, along the corridor and then just your dad randomly appears in front of you, don't try to turn uh, into the kitchen and avoid um, hitting your dad because in the kitchen there is a fridge that is very hard one, so if you hit it, uh, it will be painful for you. Better break in your dad, he's soft, he will forgive you. The thing is that it's really a good play of words with hard and soft. So you can see the hard fridge, so if you hit the fridge it will be painful for you and the dad is soft. Probably it will be not that painful for you personally because dad uh, is softer than a fridge. Uh, though it will be painful for your dad for sure, very painful. Uh, uh, but soft in Russian is also kind and um, with a kind heart and it he will forgive you very fast, so no problems. Again, the advice is an odd one, a weird one, but 
this is the kind of book with those helpful advice. And I just want to remind you that books are always great presents for Christmas that is coming very soon. So if you haven't decided on the present, think about books. And if you're learning a language, you can gift a book to yourself. It's also very nice to receive presents from yourself. Um, and if somebody is learning the language, uh, maybe try to find the book that will be suitable for his, her level and uh, make them happy with a new book in their library. What else did I want to say? Oh yeah, enjoy books, enjoy reading, enjoy learning new languages, new words and expressions. And if you like this video, consider subscribing and thumbs up and see you next time. Bye.